So, as you come through, you find yourself just stationary, drifting. Is our hair like going floaty? Yeah, your, your feet touch no ground, your hair kind of floats a bit, and your body gently glides without direction away from the open portal behind you, which doesn't close. Drifting to a slow stop, and you're all kind of holding hands, just kind of drifting. Gravity holds no sway here, <laughs> not in the way you know it. Surrounding you in every direction is a sea of swirling silvery mists and curling winds, an expanse of soft gray and white dots with distant points of light like the stars of a night sky. The door behind you is built into a massive, rough island of dull cerulean rock that sits adrift in this strange place. But what really catches your eye are the numerous platinum chains, maybe a dozen or so thick platinum chains that are bolted tightly to and wrapped around this dark blue rock before pulling to the creature that they restrain. <gasps> Just below the door, about 30 or so feet from the island and about 25 or so feet from you, rests a terrifying behemoth that challenges the darkest of your nightmares. <laughs> This is way worse than I thought. <laughs> a hulking beast covered in spiky armored plates resembling a bulbous swollen serpent with a silvery tail that seems to curl and drift infinitely towards the distant skies, tethered to an impossible distance on the horizon. The hardened, pale flesh plates that surround it are veiny and smooth, almost slick, while its muscles tense against the numerous chains that surround it. At its front, where it faces you, a trunk-like torso carries two thick, muscular arms that end in terrifying pincers, also held by the same thick, silvery bands and chains to the rock. It is bound and unable to move to this rock. Between the fleshy shoulders sits a gargantuan face crested with horned ridges along the brow and the corners of the immense jaw where hundreds of two-foot teeth layer and tangle around the edges of a 12-foot-wide mouth, ever dripping a thick, clear saliva that drips from its chin and floats into the space around, as well as the two heavy chains that connect to the sides of its mouth. Two of these are just built into the sides of its, of its jaw. Noseless, a singular eye would sit above the mouth, were it not covered by a platinum plate bolted to its brow. And there you sit floating as it just sits there, bound, blinded, chains attached to it, with the door behind you. You kind of spin around and look, and you see two large levers framing each side of the door. And maybe we should go nope. ahead. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope. We are looking at the face of an elder god. This is insane. Okay. And the door. You really want to pull one of those levers. 42 feet. You can make an investigation check to see what the levers do. Yeah, I'm going to roll an investigation check. I'll Nothing do, good. I'll do the other one. Okay. Nothing good. The left lever seems to be, you now see as you get close, it's connected to a multi, many, many of these chains around. You can see there's actually within this island, what initially you didn't notice, intricate little bits of clockwork that weave behind, and the, the, the lever on the left, if pulled, would probably release all of the chains. Okay. The lever on the right seems to be affixed to a network that, join, that connects directly to the two chains that attach to its sides of its jaw. And you gather, if they were pulled, it might force the jaw open. Oh, so he can feed things to the dreadnought. So he keeps it alive or something? Feed his enemies to it. Or it breathes some sort of... Well, we read in the notes, right, that this is how he discarded of the failed experiments. So if all of these experiments, you bonus, you uh, well, he generate... Said he, he said the, the, the bodies were jettisoned into the Astral Sea. Um, and the last bit of the notes that you read dealt with one of his ritual chambers within the Dreadnought. Within the Dreadnought, he can go inside the Dreadnought. You can pull it open and go, go inside, inside the Dreadnought. Yeah, we're going, yeah, he was inside Moby Dick. Oh my god. Should we go That's in? Just, probably just to see, where just to see what it's like. open its mouth and go inside That's of it? probably where the portal is to the Crystal Mines. really fucking cool. Jester, Maybe. you want to go inside? Tell I us. would go in the behemoth oh. thing. I think it's even really cool. Yeah, I'm not even yeah. wanting to come in here to begin with. Yeah, but you We've all flip flopped. I want to leave. You can go in it. Okay, hands <laughs> for going in the giant astral dreadnought. Caduceus has a good suggestion. I have a thought. Frumpkin is floating between my hands. Uh-huh. Frumpkin's going in. We should open the mouth, though. Yes. Well, I send Frumpkin up and just we, float him 
right in front of We will of ourselves space. right near that fucking door, oh, yeah. though. All right, you guys all drift by the door. Blind and deaf, and Frumpkin is just floating in the astral sea in front of this thing's closed mouth. Okay. Do you guys remember which one of the levers yeah, let to go right, and which one, on the one right, the right is the yeah, one yeah, you yeah. need? You're so, blind and deaf. No, I'm not listening to anything. <laughs> I'm just talking out loud. <laughs> All right. I don't like being blind and deaf, so please do something <laughs> soon. Forward, pull the right I lever. I roll myself up to the right lever. <laughs> you pull the lever and you hear and you just beyond out of the sight on the top of the island something sparks and the sparks head sit down to the two chains and then arc over to the side of the creature's mouth shocking the sides of its body uh, the sides of its of its head you watch it kind of kind of pull and restrain against the chains and as it does the jaw opens up the teeth lining it, a bit of spittle kind of spattering out, and as it's open, you just see kind of the, the dark interior of its throat. The poor with baby. Little tiny frumpkin kind of floating in space before it, kind of looking back at Caleb going. <laughs> and that fucking cosmonaut into that goddamn dream. He just starts paddling through the astral plane inside. <laughs> this frumpkin heads into the gargantuan maw of this terrifying astral beast. You see the cat disappear into the shadow, and then you lose contact with Frumpkin. <gasps> it is, it's another doorway, holy shit. This thing has a, another plane inside of it. It's, it's not, it's not innards, it's not the inside of a beast. It's, yeah, it's another door. We don't, it's, we, we don't know, it's too much. We, we, we're level 10, it's too much. Do it. Do you want to go in? No! Where would we go? How okay, would we okay, get okay, back? Okay, 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 okay. Counterclockwise. Now I'm flipping. Counterclockwise. <laughs> Caduceus, going in or, or leaving? I think speak going in. Speak your truth. <laughs> Laura, going in. Going in. Sam, speak your no! truth. <laughs> Liam, speak your truth. Caleb starts floating towards the back. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm holding on to him. Three and one. That's three and one. I am holding on to him. <laughs> now, 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 now. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Not the brave. Live up to your name. <laughs> and you all, you all are doing this. Oh, okay. So, not you watch as the entirety of your friend party, one by one, drift into the open, gaping, toothy jaws of an astral We're dreadnought. We're holding hands. Holding hands. Until they're all disappeared into but, the shadow. Well, holy hand. But you're holding knots hand? You going with them? No, the rule before we came in here was everybody holds hands. Everybody holds hands. Everybody holds hands. So not you're being dragged into its mouth. Or you can stay <laughs> out. Hello. Stay out. With it. Uh, I've already died once, it's okay, let's go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. One by one, you feel yourself going into its kind of warm, cavernous throat. The smell itself is strange. It's it's peppery, but also metallic. Oh, like it's nondescript. It Thank you. Uh, <laughs> just at the moment that you look behind and you can see the silhouetted shadow of the teeth. dozens of teeth, teeth and the jaw closing. No, 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 no. You feel your body suddenly get drawn <laughs> quickly down a space similar to stepping through these doorways oh, before. Sure. To the taint. You stop. Standing in a cavernous, dark chamber. You have no idea where the walls are. It is too open with a little bit of light you have. I look down. What's on the floor? My Stone. Your gravity has taken you now. I'm holding. I'm taking my hands back. We're standing right. fire. And you light the space around. You can see distant sconces of burning torches yeah, and candelabras set in the center. All you do see is a small, arranged set of tables in the middle of this wide open cavern. And let's roll pick up next. Oh! Oh! What is that? Tables. What kind of tables? We're off the map. We're off the map. You guys are off the map now. We're off the map. We're off the map. We're off the map. <laughs> Why did we do this? I'm sick. I'm sick of my arm hurts. This is all this you're doing. This, this is all you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm into it. I'm really into it. <laughs>